Early in March of 2022, the Falkland Maritime Heritage Trust announced a gargantuan discovery at the bottom of the Weddell Sea near Antarctica. The Endurance 22 expedition sought to find what would become the biggest maritime discovery since finding the Titanic. Under the freezing waters, well preserved for well over a hundred years, lay the Endurance, the ship which carried Ernst Shackleton and 26 other men in what would be one of the most terrifying, extraordinary, grueling, yet also inspiring and, and yes, enduring survival stories of all time. When I saw the images, I grew, quite frankly, I was giddy. I was giddy. I was excited. After all, this was a story I've kind of been obsessed with for a long time, many, many years, and, and it reaffirms my opinion that hell is not actually hot and full of fire, it is instead cold and full of ice. Menson Bound, the director of exploration on the Endurance 22 mission, said, We are overwhelmed by our good fortune in having located and captured images of Endurance. We hope our discovery will engage young people and inspire them with the pioneering spirit, courage, and fortitude of those who sailed Endurance to Antarctica. The Shackleton Expedition is the story in which I am now going to tell you, but by no means is this the definitive documentary on the subject. I have provided many links in the description below for further watching and reading because this is one hell of a dramatic story. This is a tale of endurance, the true story of the Shackleton Expedition. The insane truth is that Ernst Shackleton did not just make one daring trip to explore Antarctica. The first expedition he was on was met with disaster. In fact, Shackleton himself suffered from about a scurvy in his travels. But there must have been something calling Shackleton when it came to Antarctica, because both before and after his famous and fateful journey, he seemed to wish to return. Was it for money? Was it for glory? For a conquering of his own masculinity? Perhaps it's a mixture of them all. For Shackleton truly loved the unknown, to explore, to push himself to his uttermost extremes. And he was a natural-born leader, cool under fire, he was optimistic but never losing sight of reality, and by all accounts, honest. He never lied nor hid the dangers which an Antarctic journey would bring. This honesty can actually be found in Shackleton's famous ad that he put in the newspapers. He wrote, Men wanted for hazardous journey. Low wages, bitter cold, long hours of complete darkness, safe return doubtful, honor and recognition in event of success. Ernst Shackleton. Though perhaps this ad is in dispute, like from the Smithsonian, the Smithsonian has been disputing this ad for a long time, this is what Shackleton 100% wrote. Sir, it has been an open secret for some time past that I have been desirous of leading another expedition to the South Polar regions. I'm glad now to be able to state that, through the generosity of a friend, I can announce that an expedition will start next year with the object of crossing the South Polar Continent from sea to sea. I have taken the liberty of calling the expedition the Imperial Trans-Antarctic Expedition, because I feel that not only the people of these islands, but our kinsmen in all the lands under the Union Jack will be willing to assist towards the carrying out of the full program of exploration to which my comrades and myself are pledged. Yours faithfully, Ernest H. Shackleton. After gathering 26 other men for his journey, they procured a ship aptly titled The Endurance. I didn't actually know this before, but while doing research for this video, The Endurance was just part one of Shackleton's expedition. There would be another ship sailing from Tasmania to drop off supplies for the Endurance team one-third of the way across Antarctica. Now that's actually not a bad plan, considering the lack of food and supplies is what almost killed Shackleton on the previous expedition in which he partook in. But the Tasmanian team would be mute because, as it turned out, Shackleton and the crew of the Endurance would never reach Antarctica. Instead, they would be trapped in 10 feet of ice, adrift in a sea, at the mercy of the currents for a full 10 months. It's incredible the foresight of the team to bring not just a photography camera, but also a film camera. For the images captured and being used throughout this documentary, 
are truly stunning and bring to mind that pictures are worth a thousand words. After traveling south, pack ice began to creep in, trapping the Endurance. And on January 19th, 1915, the Endurance would become trapped, stationary. After waiting one full month of simply just sitting there, trapped in the ice, the crew noticed water up ahead. This could be the break that the expedition was actually looking for. The currents had carried the pack ice away, giving them a sliver of hope, a chance to escape. And for two grueling days, the crew worked nonstop to cut the ship away at the deep ice, basically in hopes of reaching that water before the currents would close the pack ice back together again, keeping them trapped. So putting all power to the engines, the Endurance drives full steam ahead, everyone sitting in pure anticipation. But the ice is just too thick. The Endurance would have to endure more. Luckily, the men were in relatively good spirits. They knew and understood the desperate situation in which they found themselves in, but they clung onto the idea of the ice thinning as time wore on, even as they approached spring. That's what they were looking for. So to keep busy, the crew often played with the sled dogs that they brought along with the expedition. There was even a ship's cat, which sort of became like a mascot while they were trapped on the ice. But one month turned into two, then three, then four, and the ice showed absolutely no signs of letting up. The endurance was trapped, adrift with no control, and only the provisions stored aboard the ship. All the while, Shackleton knew that at any day, at any time, the pack ice could push against the hull of the Endurance, essentially cracking her like a walnut. And only sheer luck has kept that pressure from tearing their means of survival apart. That reality would come into fruition on October 27th, 1915. After 10 grueling months on the ice, Shackleton's fears became a reality. Perched heavily onto her port side, the sheer pressure from the ice caused a great amount of damage to her stern. Despite some frantic efforts to try to salvage the Endurance, it soon became clear that the Endurance simply could not endure anymore. And on October 27th, Shackleton made the agonizing decision to abandon ship. This must have been crushing to Shackleton and his entire crew, no pun intended. For leaving the Endurance behind would meant there would be no longer any possibility of completing this expedition. But on a primal mode, that sense of home, that sense of protection against the harsh Antarctic elements, that was gone now. No longer was there a shared sense of duty between keeping themselves alive and all the while thinking of getting back home. To Shackleton, there was only two outcomes now. Either he leads his men back to civilization, or they all die. And getting back to civilization was not going to be an, an easy task. It was not going to be as easy as walking across the ice. Being adrift on the Antarctic ice had carried Shackleton and the Endurance over 1,100 miles in 281 days. To put that into perspective, the crew were now over 350 miles from the closest island containing shelter from the unforgiving Antarctic weather. After about a month of scavenging the Endurance and gathering anything that they could for food and supplies, the Endurance finally sank beneath the waves. The sight must have felt like a, like a death blow for Shackleton and his crew. Their last major link to their lives as it had been was now gone forever. Yet the Endurance's lifeboats lived on, the crew tr tying ropes around their bodies and, and dragging them across the ice. It's almost as if the Endurance had given its offspring to help keep these men alive. But there's no denying it, nor putting it off any longer. These men were about to learn that hell was not hot and full of fire, but it was frozen and full of ice. Shackleton and his crew loved the sled dogs. These were their friends and companions. They would play with the dogs, they would run with them, even use them for warmth when the Antarctic winter couldn't seem to get any colder. Everyone knew that the moment the endurance sank, the dogs' days were numbered. While to any of us sitting here comfortably in our own homes, this might actually seem really barbaric, but to someone facing life or death, the decision to begin killing and eating the dogs 
makes a lot of sense. This goes not just for survival, as in eating the meat to give myself nourishment, but also for practicality. After all, these dogs, as beautiful and full of life as they were, they ate more food than most of Shackleton's crew. So if they had kept the dogs alive, they themselves would have starved. By March 30th, 1916, the last of the dogs were shot and eaten. Frank Wilde, the expedition's second-in-command, later recalled, I have known many men who I would rather have shot than these dogs. Navigating on ice is extremely difficult because you're adrift, you're moving. While land remains solid, these men were adrift upon something which could split or change direction at any moment. The amount of sheer tension these men must have felt all those months out on the ice must have been immeasurable. Literally any moment could have been their last. But in April 1916, the ice had melted enough that Shackleton and his crew could successfully put the lifeboats in the water. Their plans were to sail north and reach Deception Island, but what sounds wonderful on paper often doesn't live up to contact with the enemy. In this case, wind, storms, and more ice were the enemies. After days upon days of battling the elements on the water, exhausted and beaten, covered in sores, skin raw from the salty waters, the expedition made landfall on Elephant Island, a place considerably closer than Deception Island. This is the first time Shackleton and his crew stepped foot on solid land in over 497 days. But dry land brought great relief to these men. After all, dry land is much safer than camping out on the ice. If the ice had enough pressure to crack the endurance like a walnut, just imagine what that pressure could do to a human body. Or the ice could simply crack or break and pull apart, causing any one of them to simply slip beneath the surface of the water and either freeze to death or drown. After many nights of torturous self-debate, Shackleton knew what he had to do in order to save his men. What Shackleton needed to do was reach South Georgia Island and return to Elephant Island with help. But Shackleton knew exactly what this meant. It meant traveling over 900 miles on a 25-foot raft in the worst and most dangerous stretch of ocean in the world. Yet that wasn't all he'd be facing. All he has is a chronometer and a sextant. South Georgia Island is small. Reaching it on open water would need precise accuracy. Despite the dangers, despite knowing his chance of survival being next to zero, he set off anyways. After all, a small chance of living is better than freezing to death, which is exactly what would happen if help did not arrive. One lifeboat was jerry-rigged with a sail and given one month's supplies of food and water. Perhaps they could have fit more into the lifeboat, but Shackleton knew that in one month he would have either returned with help or be dead. On April 24, 1916, Shackleton and five other men set sail with good spirits despite the danger. Those who remained behind watched on and waved, cheering for their fellow comrades, the moment hauntingly immortalized on camera. They waved and cheered until Shackleton's boat disappeared into the distance. And now it was back to work. Shackleton's odyssey had just begun. Traveling about 60 miles a day, the next few weeks for Shackleton and the five other brave souls would be absolutely treacherous. Their sail had been rendered useless by being so wet and frozen. The waves constantly washed into the boat and jostled them around, so, so navigation was basically impossible. Frostbite became common, and any exposed skin, such as your facial cheeks, your nose, or, or your eyelids, you know, they were rubbed raw by the constant battering of salty Antarctic waters. And to make matters worse, their fifth day out at sea caused them to head straight into a gale. The force became so violent the lifeboat nearly capsized. The boat tossed interminably on the big waves under gray, threatening skies, recorded Shackleton. Every surge of the sea was an enemy to be watched and circumvented. Yet they survived even that be it by a stroke of pure luck, or the true competency of their seamanship, or quite frankly, a healthy dosage of both. Remember that this is Antarctica. Water freezes, and that is exactly what happens to the access water within Shackleton's lifeboat. 
If they weren't rowing, they were chipping away at the building ice within the lifeboat itself. They would beat it with their oars, try desperately to claw at it with their gloved hands, but eventually the buildup just became too much. But these men didn't give up. Their oars, the sail, anything that was not 100% necessary for their survival was thrown overboard to keep their vessel afloat and lighten the load to maintain a constant speed. After the first gale, Shackleton reported that the next few days were actually really calm. A great reprieve for the five men, to be sure. But that was only temporary, because on the 11th day of their journey, yet another gale struck, nearly capsizing them once again. And yet this too didn't stop them. For after being on the open ocean for 14 straight days, they spotted South Georgia Island. Somehow, despite literally all odds being against them, these men had found their destination. But as this expedition had proven, it was not yet time to celebrate. These men still had journeying ahead. After spending another night on the ice trying to find a suitable landing spot, they experienced hurricane-forced winds. The agony these men must have felt that night. There it was. Their destination was straight ahead of them. They could see it with their own eyes, the beginnings of finding civilization. And yet they were stuck, unable to move inland, forced to endure yet another night on the ocean. But as daylight came, they found a suitable place to land. Yet even then, their journey was far from over. They had landed on the southern tip of South Georgia Island, and while safely on land, what lay ahead were steep, ice, and snow-covered mountains. They deliberated for a bit. Could they try to sail around the island on the boat? The answer was no. After all, they had just witnessed how insanely harsh the weather was just the previous day. This left them with only one choice. Ditch the lifeboat and begin climbing. Three men were too weak to continue the journey, and Shackleton made the tough decision at leaving them behind. But they understood that staying put would actually give them a better chance of surviving than suicidally charging into these mountains too exhausted to do much of anything. So on May 19, 1916, with just two other people, Shackleton began his trek over the mountains, which were over 5,000 feet in elevation, and steep glaciers which could crack and break literally at any moment. They took about three days worth of food, and ingeniously put screws on the bottom of their boots to give them better traction when dealing with the steep snow. The first day would prove to be a waste, because they got lost on one of the thousands of uh, mountains populating this island. They had no choice but to circumnavigate their way back in order to better continue for the next day. And then they tied themselves together with some leftover rope, and they basically slid down the mountain's steep descent. And yet after they did that, they were only greeted with 2,000 foot tall glacial cliffs and a 25 foot tall waterfall, all in which they had to cross. Their target was a small whaling station known as Stromness, but there was a problem. Shackleton had no clue if Stromness would even be populated. After all, most of the inhabitants would leave for the winter seasons. If no one was there, they could kiss any chances of survival goodbye. But these men took a look at their odds, and a familiar tune began to play in their minds. This was their best chance they had. Risks be damned. After a full 36 hours of climbing, sliding, and stumbling about, Shackleton looked out over the distance and saw Stromness. They staggered their way forward, could see some children playing, which elated these men. After all, if children were here, so would other people. Shackleton approached these children, who were justifiably terrified by what they saw. Remember that these men had just spent well over a year living on the ice, seeing the Endurance sink, sailing on a lifeboat for over 14 days, and then they just traveled over terrain which no man had ever traversed before. In no way did these men look like Hollywood heroes. Their faces were black, noses frostbitten, they had long and unkempt beards that were full of ice and snow, their jackets were horribly damaged and in tatters, they probably reeked. Any kid would look at these three men and be terrified by what they saw. They would look like creatures stumbling out of the darkness. And to add to everything, these men had just come from the south. Who in their right mind would travel over those mountains? in this type of weather. So no one at all expected Shackleton and his men to arrive. 
Nevertheless, Shackleton reported to the station manager, the same station manager he had met two years before while starting his mission. And this station manager did not recognize this thin, skanky-looking man approaching him. Who the hell are you, he calls out. My name is Shackleton, replied the leader of the Endurance Expedition. Shackleton turned away and began to cry. Shackleton did not rest until he rescued not just the three men left on the southern base of South Georgia Island, but also those still stranded on Elephant Island. Since World War I was in full swing by this point, the British had little for support that they could actually send the pleading Shackleton. However, the Chilean government would eventually lend a vessel called the Yelcho. After several attempts at rescue, the ice continued to be Shackleton's main foe. The remaining 22 stranded survivors on Elephant Island were eventually rescued and all made their way back to England. All of them had survived. The Shackleton expedition has gone down as one of the greatest stories of survival in the world. The fact that these 27 men had survived what would easily have killed the average man is astonishing and shows the true dedication, the strength, the agility, and the teamwork that these men had together. The discovery of their vessel, the Endurance, their lifeblood for 10 grueling months, I truly hope will reintroduce this harrowing story to the public. And I hope that the Endurance brings to life what these men had to endure to survive in the world's harshest weather. So everybody, I hope you enjoyed. All my social media is in the description below. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. And in the end, this is Adam Noyce of AN Productions saying... Sayonara.